Hey, what's up everyone? I'm probably thinking, why is... Why am I wearing this hoodie? <clears throat> I've not been well over the past few days. I have got my headphones on underneath. So it makes my head look even bigger. And, uh, hope you're all doing well, hope you're having a good weekend. Just gonna talk about the Joker, some updates. If you're sick of the Joker videos, but... It's the only thing worthwhile talking about. <clears throat> I know Zombieland 2 came out, Terminator, Dark Fate. I'm going to see them tomorrow. So, um, look forward to that. Actually, Terminator, Dark Fate, it just looks crap. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Emil Johansson, sending in a 20 SEKs, whatever that is. Should Warner Brothers... Do Joker 2 or Lex Luthor next? I would say Lex Luthor. I think that would be a good uh, political drama. And I'm sure people are going to say, well, you can't do a Lex Luthor film without Superman. Well, we just did a Joker film without Batman, so... Suck it. There you go. I'm going to go through some screenshots. So, the title of this video is that what is the title of this video? <laughs> uh, Joker is the biggest R-rated movie ever. More profit, profitable than Avengers Infinity War. Yes, Joker is the best comic book movie of 2019. So this was their opinion. And oh, the, the MCU fanboys came out. Even when the director said that this movie is not canon. And it's not based in any comic book. So apparently now, you you can make a film about a comic book character, but it's not a comic book film. That's how that's how twisted MCU fans are. I've kept, I've been telling you this. Joker isn't a comic book movie. It's not. It's it's not. They actually believe it's not. It's it's not a super. It's not snoo, snoop, It is not superheroes, right? It's not cape. Sh but it's a comic book film based on a comic book character. It's not a comic book movie. It just happens to have a comic book character in it. <laughs> uh, it's not a comic book movie. It just happens it have comic book characters in it. The Joker movie Twitter account, they said, uh, well, this is from Todd Phillips, they reposted. Wow, thanks to my wonderful cast and crew, and of course, the fans from around the world, for seeing through all the noise and showing up some more than once. We are super proud of the film and all uh, your wonderful messages make it that much more special. So there you go, you've got the shots. You posted those two images. This one. It's beautiful. Biggest R-rated film of all time. Have this one. And then you also had this, you has had this. Uh, Joker fans come for the stairs. Locals hope they stick around for Bronx extras. So, probably already know um, the stairs where Joker dances. It's in the Bronx. And that's where all the fans are going. Social media people, they want to do their little videos there. It depends on who, it depends on where you see this news, right? Because then you've also got this. This is real life, not a movie. There's backlash in the Bronx after the stares from Joker have become overrun by influencers. So it depends, I guess, depends who you talk to in the area. Some might like it, some might not. That's, they're still trying to go after this film. They failed attacking this film they were attacking it because they were like no we, we don't want people to see this it, it's going to cause incel violence but meanwhile what the film has done is you know there's been protests going on around the world and people within the protest have been inspired by the joker character and they're dressing up as joker right fighting corruption and you know the the the, the governments how the governments are treating the people you know, we are all clowns. They're, they're graffiti in Chile says, we are all clowns. Ralph Runyon, he says, well, that's a problem. The Joker is a symbol of chaos, not revolution. But chaos is fair. 
<laughs> Mr. Wright says, You can't visit MCU locations. You'd have to visit a green screen. Uh, Ryan Rail says, R-rated box office congratulatory posts aren't like the ones you've, you're used to. Says, you mother effer. <laughs> he says, there's Joker, there's Deadpool, Pennywise, Jesus, Hugh Jackman, The Wolfpack, Mr. Grey, Ted, Scott Mendelssohn. Says, Joker has become the biggest R-rated movie ever. Now, this was posted two days ago, so they were kind of predicting that it's going to become, but I think today it's past it. Or it will pass it today. It says Joker earned $2.4 million on Thursday, bringing its 21 day total to $258.6 million. Uh, presuming it doesn't drop today, it's presuming it doesn't drop dead today, it'll pass Captain America the Winter Soldier, the Amazing Spider Man tonight. The film had $778 million worldwide as of Wednesday. And it has now earned 788 worldwide. And that'll put it right above Deadpool and Deadpool 2. So yes, Joker is now the biggest R-rated movie of all time. Sans inflation. Joker will end up as profitable as Avengers Infinity War. Batman or no Batman, it's a hit. It looks like Joker's success at the box office will take it close to the money made by Avengers Infinity War. Can you believe it? Though the film was... Though the film has attracted controversy, it seems that audiences cannot get enough of the DC movie, uh, taking its projected profit close to the Marvel blockbuster. So this is coming from Deadline. Uh, Joker is on track to make at least 464 million profit after global theatrical TV and home entertainment windows and could go even further if it makes more than 900 million dollars. This isn't far from Infinity Wars Hall, Though more noteworthy is the fact that Joker had a significantly smaller budget than the Marvel blockbuster. It's not far off Black Panther profit as well, and has already overtaken Aquaman, Venom, and Deadpool 2. This is the the salty tears of the MCU fans. Mm. Keeping me hydrated. Well, after the way you know they've behaved towards Joker. Uh, towards Martin Scorsese, anyone who's called out the MCU films over the past few weeks, uh, you know, they, they've lost their minds. You've seen the way they behave. It, what Wasn't it Joss Whedon who said D DC films are more cinematic than Marvel? Bob Iger then wanted to come out and start giving it all this. Using Black Panther, right? Because he was like, let, let's let's drag our, our our black hero into this, and our black director. We're going to use them. That's, I've, I've told you what Disney's like. I told you what Marvel is like. Who said? Just uh, what was it? A, maybe a year or two ago. Um, how you know Black Panther being released on Black History Month? It's almost as if Marvel and Disney are saying. You know, you African Americans, you only deserve one month out of the year. And that's when we're going to release Black Panther. Make mo make that money. You got used. And of course all the bla brainwashed kids of the MC of the MCU fanboys, they came after me like you cancel this guy, cancel I'm still here. I'm still here. You can't beat Marvel, you have to do something they cannot do. And he did something they cannot do. And, you know, he's uh, breaking records at the box office. So, there you go. I don't consider myself a DC fan, but I loved Wonder Woman and was honestly insulted when MCU fans attributed its success to it being like an MCU movie. Mm. Even though it's nothing like an MCU movie. I would say, Aqu what about Aquaman? I would say Aquaman was a bit more MCU-ish. That's why it doesn't hold up on repeat viewings. I would say Wonder Woman holds up better on repeat viewings than Aquaman does. Who is this? Do a video about comic book crap? No. How many videos do you want about the guy? And stop spamming. Now, he, now the thing is, right, <clears throat> I keep hearing about this wokeness, right? On the one hand, I can I, I can understand people are annoyed that TV companies, film companies, they want to 
go with the, you know, social justice route. And that can get a bit annoying over time, especially when it's kind of forced or it's not being thought out properly. But see people who say, it's a lot of a lot of YouTubers, I'm getting really sick of this, a lot of YouTubers who say, oh, oh my God, we don't, we don't need the politics in our movies. What are you talking about? How A lot of films that I grew up with, you grew up with, they were very political. Uh, you know, it might not be, you know, about ethnicity. It might not be about identity politics, but it was very political. Well, about society issues, government issues, a commentary on politics and society and all these things. So Joker is a, a political film in a way. <laughs> Watchmen, the movie, is political. The comic book is political. <laughs> The whole doomsday scenario is based on the USA versus the USSR. Okay, well, I can't, um, you know, here's Patrick Bateman who says they made superhero movies all about identity polit op about identity politics, which are supposed to be an escape. There's only so long you can do escapist superhero films, but then once in a while you need you need a film like you know Man of Steel or Batman v Superman or Watchmen or Joker. Happy Diwali. This is, this is for everyone celebrating Diwali. There you go. It is good to be here. And it is good to see you here. So tomorrow it's Terminator Dark Fate. Zombie Land 2. On Tuesday I'm watching these two little smaller films. Monos. And The Last Black Man in San Francisco or something like that. And then on Halloween, Thursday, Adam's Family. I'll check out Adam's Family, this new animated film. And Doctor Sleep, yeah, the Shining sequel. That's going to be a busy week, but I also need to catch up with Rob Zombie's Three from Hell. And uh, maybe some other horror films because, you know, it's Halloween week, so... Want to catch up with some horror. The new challenger. Thank you for subscribing, D. Patterson. <laughs> Jojo Rabbit, uh, no, it's not on my list. I again, I am not watching Watchmen. The TV show, I don't care. I don't, I don't have time for TV shows. I keep telling you guys. I have my news, right? But I also have my scoopers and poopers. So I'm going to click on that. This is my scoopers and pooper. <laughs> Frosty at the top. Terminator Dark Fate Junket today. Talking to Tim Miller and the cast. If you have any questions, let me know. Of course, the, the shilling is strong in this guy. He is a, a shell for hire, this guy. I'm going to search for something. Right. At the top, he says, ter this is going back four years, Terminator Genesis is easily the third best in the franchise behind T1 and T2. And then, so this this is what, you, you're trying to say Genesis is better than Rise of the Machines? I would say Rise of the Machines is better than Genesis, was the one with Christian Bale. I would say even that's better than Genesis. But well, there he is, shilling for Genesis, and now he says Terminator Dark, Fe uh, Dark Fate is easily the best Terminator, Terminator movie since Terminator 2. Uh, loved how the female, uh, no, loved how the film features three female protagonists that all kick ass. Jesus. You, you can tell the fakeness in these people. You can s Some Joker updates here. A uh, fantastic $47.8 million at international box office for Joker in its fourth weekend, boasting international QM to 571 and global haul to an incredible 849, has passed Wonder Woman and Mission Impossible 5 and will soon beat Thor Ragnarok in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 <laughs> and Venom on its way to smashing the 1 billion mark. 
Bloody hell. What's Dami saying? Critics, bloggers, fake DC, DC fans, MCU sheep. Nobody wants to see dark DC movies. <laughs> what if they cast Nicolas Cage as Two-Face or Clayface for the Batman? I think Nicolas Cage would be good for something. I don't know about those characters, but he'd be good for something in there. He's got a new film coming out, Nicolas Cage. What's it called? Colour Out of Space. R written by H.P. Lovecraft, or based on his story. Colour Out of Space. Horror sci-fi. Dopentbeat says, he o uh, Nicolas Cage owns 12 houses, that's why he takes every project. So uh, IMDB, it got, it got a redesign, it got... It's like owned by IMDb and now it's got this IMDb Pro redesign. I'll show you. So this is what Box Office Mojo looks like now. And uh, you have to pay for it to get all the access, all the features. Uh, I've not had a chance to see what it shows, allows you to do. So Malef Malef you can see Maleficent started well. Uh, but then Joker, Monday, made more money than Maleficent. Tuesday, Maleficent did well. But since when, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, with Maleficent at the box office, still Joker, the number one film. In uh, the US, I think that is. Domestic. Yeah, domestic daily. Joker has been killing it. Wait a minute, what's this? And Dopant Beat says, I want... I want to see The Irishman so badly, but I dated Chad Verdi's daughter, who produced the movie. S still salty about it. Weren't you salty? Who's salty? What happened? Might have to wake some of you up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Psycho Bevo. One dollar. Super chat. 